Everybody ready? Only if you keep me in frame. I will keep I'm going to hug him. No, I'll give you a frame. I just okay, keep me in. You're blocked in. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, as everyone knows, yesterday was a very difficult day, but um, this morning uh, I'm really proud to say that we, during the night, we were able to contain the fire to about 60 percent. The fire burned through about 400 acres here in Carlsbad and did considerable uh, construction or home damage and also damaged some apartments and industrial buildings. But most importantly, today. Um, we're here to ask for a continued support from our community. Uh, for those of you who do not have to be on the roads, it's important that we try and keep the roads uh, open as for our fire safety people as much as possible. Um, we're also working with our neighboring cities. And as you can see, although we're about 60% contained, the fire to the east is still, um, is still not contained. I want to thank our first responders for the great job they've done. And although there was major structural damage done here in Carlsbad, we literally saved hundreds of homes. And I think as when you drive around today, you'll be able to, uh, to see what we actually were able to save. This was really a joint effort. Um, we worked with all the agencies throughout, uh, throughout the county. Most importantly, those agencies immediately surrounding us, uh, Oceanside, Encinitas, Vista, San Marcos, Escondido. We've had actually equipment come from all over the state. Yesterday afternoon, I was able to talk to uh, Assemblyman, Mark, or Assemblyman Rocky Chavez, Senator Mark Weiland, and also Speaker Tony Atkins to try and get additional support for not only Carlsbad, but for through this whole uh, region. And last night, you could see at the 5:30 uh, interview. You can see the DC-10 actually fly over us into into San Marcos. So that happened relatively quick. Uh, Supervisor Horn and the and the supervisors, county supervisors, were also of great support, and we want to thank them. There was also many others. Those who manned the shelters, the restaurants who donated food, um, they all played an integral role in, in trying to make everything. Uh, as satisfactory as possible and we need to thank them also. But today we still need continued support for the hot spots throughout the area that we'll be working. Um, also uh, as, a, as a note, our parks will all be closed with some exceptions and that is the, the Senior Center, the Dove Library and Cole, the Cole Library will continue to or remain open. Again, uh, we thank you for, for being here, and uh, at this moment in time, I'm going to turn it over to uh, uh, Chief Mike Davis. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, everyone, for being here this morning. Um, like the Mayor talked about, there was tremendous work done through the night. Um, containment lines around the fire uh, were held at 400 acres. Um, Lots of boots on the ground, hard work, 60% containment. Um, I have a laundry list of structures that were damaged, and I'll, I'll give that to you in just a second. Um, some evacuations have been lifted, and roads have been opened. Um, you can check the website. That'll be posted uh, for everyone to view uh, without trying to explain all the different uh, nuances on, on the television. It's much easier for you to read um, over the air for folks. Um, what we're trying to do right now is keep anyone who is evacuated within the fire perimeter, keeping them out for a few reasons. One, there are still hot spots, um, and two, we have a relatively large power outage that um, is persistent, <clears throat> kind of along the El Camino Real corridor going west uh, to about Black Rail. It includes business, commercial, um, and residential portions of the community. So we're gonna keep people out of there until uh, power is restored. I don't have an ETA on that at the moment. Um, last night we were able to send out some damage assessment units. That's difficult to do during the night. Um, but I'll give you the numbers for uh, damaged and lost dwellings. 22 dwelling units destroyed. Um, 
that would be the occupancies that people live in, whether that's um, a home or a condominium. Of those, there's two commercial buildings, four homes, single family residents, six damaged residents, one outbuilding, two vehicle, two vehicles damaged, um, and that's it that we have right now. We'll be doing more damage assessment with the daylight hours, um, and we'll have, be firming those numbers up as time goes along. There's about 300 firefighters on the fire line now, uh, up from the 150 yesterday. Uh, those are relief crews for the firefighters in the field. We'll be switching personnel at shift change this morning. Um, there still remains 50 police officers doing a great job for us. Um, police Chief Gary Morrison is going to give you an update there in just a second. Um, thank you very much to all the law enforcement support from all over the county of San Diego. Um, just a lot of things to think about for our residents right now. Uh, we do have bad air quality. Um, it's not just the Carlsbad event. It's, it's a regional event. We have plenty of fires burning. So take good care of yourselves. And I do want to say one thing about the city of Carlsbad. We've had many devastating events similar to this, and we've had tragic events in this community. And there's one thing I know to be true about this community is that it always comes together. The folks are always here to help each other out. Um, we certainly appreciate it. Both my partner Gary and I appreciated it very, very much. It's just a fantastic community, and we look forward to uh, the days and weeks ahead in the recovery effort um, in helping our people in this community um, make themselves whole again. And I just want to say to everybody in Carlsbad, we appreciate it, and uh, we're going to be here for you for the long term. I'm going to pass it on to Gary Morrison before we open it up to questions. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, I too like to echo what the mayor and uh, Chief Davis has said. It's been a great team effort throughout the night. Everybody's really pulled together and the city team, and I couldn't be prouder. Um, we've had some increased patrols in the evacuated areas, as you can imagine. Uh, we want to make sure that people aren't going into areas they don't belong, and we're going to continue that uh, patrol deployment until the conclusion of this event. Our top priority is always going to be public safety protecting people's property and also supporting fire operations throughout this event. Uh, we're also actively managing road closures, traffic safety, and again, like the mayor touched on, uh, if we can minimize the traffic in these areas, it really helps us moving emergency personnel from points A to point B quickly and efficiently when we have to make those type of moves, so that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, now I refer you to our website and our social media, Facebook and Twitter with updates on those traffic closures. And I did have one update that the Dove Library is not open uh, to the public today. So that's just one update for you. And again, uh, thank you for being here and helping us get the word out to the public. And again, like Mike touched on, uh, extremely proud of the citizens of Carlsbad. Community always pulls together in these type of events. And that makes me very be proud to be a part of the city. So I think we're going to open it up to you folks for questions now. Thank you. Jump on that one. Go. Okay. Uh, like any of these big fires, uh, they're going to be investigated, and uh, we'll work together with the arson investigators and persevere uh, what the start of the event. And certainly, if it's of a criminal nature, we'll persevere uh, prosecution of the appropriate parties. No, absolutely not. It, it, like I touched on, uh, it's being investigated, like all fires are of this nature, and wherever it takes us to, it takes us to and then we'll make the appropriate decision at the time. Could you break down the 22 uh, homes again for us and just let us know? Because I don't think that added up to 22, so I just wanted to get the... <laughs> you checking my math? Uh -oh. uh, maybe a little. Okay. And let me explain it a little bit better. Okay. Of the 22, 18 were one unit. One complex, a condominium complex, that has 18 units in it. So um, 18 and four is 22. So the four single family homes um, and then the 18 units in one building. And then as far as today with winds and different, are you guys expecting to be ready to fight this fire if it's to flare up again? 
Yeah, we're, we're doing more than expecting to be ready. Um, we're taking active approaches to be ready. Um, we're watching the San Marcos uh, fire. It's not their fire, it's our regional event, uh, just to the east of us. Lots of concern, we have history um, of fires in that area that affect both Encinitas and the city of Carlsbad. Um, at nine o'clock, I'll be meeting with um, CAL FIRE type one team. Uh, meeting is unknown location at this point. I'm waiting for a phone call. Um, we're looking to transition portions of the incident command to the type one teams so that we can look uh, at supporting these events from an entirely regional perspective. The advantage to doing that is instead of competing for resources as each individual fire, we're going to be able to look at them on a, let's say, a more of a holistic view and do a, a much better job of managing all the resources within the event. So the communities that are most threatened are getting the most resources. Is there any areas in the Poinsettia fire that you guys are worried about most today as far as areas, little flare-up areas? Not too bad. Most of the heavy hot spots or heavy burning still continuing is in the middle of the black or in the middle of the burn. Um, the crew, again, the crews did a great job through the night putting wet line and cutting line. Um, so that's what got us to the 60%. Um, I can't give you a specific location because I would put all of that fire in a precarious situation. I don't want it wind tested. We're keeping a close eye, and when I say wind tested, that means if we have a wind event, anything from the interior of that fire getting blown into a green, brushy area, those areas that are still green have a high probability of ignition. So we're hoping and we're keeping a real close eye on the weather that the winds stay low. What about school closures? Uh, school, uh, our schools, I believe, in the entire North County, I know for the city of Carlsbad for sure, are closed today and tomorrow. No, we didn't have any problems over the night. Like I say, we had a pretty strong police presence in those areas that were evacuated, and I think that was a good deterrent. But no, we have not had any incidents of looting. Are they going to be doing anything differently with 211? I know I actually live off Volga, and I tried calling other uh, viewers and they've had issues with 211 getting through. Hmm. on hold for 20 minutes and you hung up on. Is there any Do you know anything changes about that? that are going to be made so that it's, it's more accurate or more helpful? The 211 system? Yeah. Um, afterwards, I'd like to get with you and make some notes. Um, part of the, what we do in the fire service, and 211 is a great service that helps us in these type of situations when we need help answering information. Anything that I can take back to the folks at 211 um, helps us build better systems in the future. So I definitely need to spend a minute with you and make sure I get that to them, and they'll make changes. How's the fire staff doing? I know there was a couple injuries before. Is there going to be uh, have you guys heard of any overnight or anything like that? I have not heard of any injuries. Um, if there's injuries, they've been minor in nature, which is great. Um, they're beat up. That's the bottom line. They've been out uh, 24 straight hours almost yeah. at this point. Um, and this is, this is extraordinarily aggressive work. And uh, they're working very hard, very hard, very proud of them. When will people be able to go back to their homes? Is that a time yet for different areas? No, uh, we haven't. I'm going to be meeting with our incident commander um, after this uh, media briefing here, and then we'll start trying to bring people back into the burn area. Again, the problem is um, even if it's cold, we're still out of power. It's hard to move people, traffic lights, and being able to move the fire apparatus around. So in those priorities is going to be hot spots, any kind of uh, anticipated burning, and then the power outages. Um, we're coordinating with sdg &E. I don't see an sdg &E representative here right now. They worked hard through the night. Just a tremendous amount of equipment off of El Camino Real on the large transmission lines. Um, I had heard uh, that they had been doing the repairs through the city of Carlsbad, um, but there's a lot of concern in terms of re-energizing. And um, a lot of times they do that for us. Uh, we have firefighters on the ground right underneath those. And if they can keep them de-energized until we can get that cleared out and the fire under control, re-energize it, that would be great. My understanding is that that transmission line goes 
right out to San Marcos where the other fire is. So that transmission line is impacted by two different fires. Um, they're doing everything they can to get power on in this, this area of Carlsbad. I know that for sure. How many evacuees were there? Well, we, boy, I've been messing up some of the numbers on uh, how many evacuees. We're having GIS look at that in terms of actual numbers. Uh, we made the 2,300 notifications, um, but our estimate is about 10,000 people had to leave um, either mandatorily or they left on their own by uh, evacuating based on a recommendation phone call. What evacuation centers are, are open at the right now for these 10,000 people? Uh, let's see. Calabria. Yeah, Calabria and some are at uh, Stage Coach, right? Yeah, in La Costa Canyon High School. Yeah. La Costa Canyon High School, Calavera Hills um, Community Center, and everyone's out of the mall, right? Okay. It, it's very difficult to describe. If you can imagine, it's like fingers everywhere. These are the open green belt, nice uh, areas that we try to keep open space. Um, those have been blackened, so I'm, I'll paint a box for you. It's south of Palomar Airport Road, El Camino Real West, north of Alga, which is also Aviar Parkway, depending on what map you're looking at. Aviar Parkway wraps around, turns into college, east of college. So that boxed area is fires fingered all throughout there. Um, the division group supervisors are working with the incident commander to try to specify kind of a, a surgical repopulation, for lack of a better term. What's your main recommendation, Chief, is if you left your house yesterday, don't come back until when? I mean, today, driving around, checking out damage quite yet, because that's probably, everyone's waking up this morning going, I want to go see my house, I want to see what happened, and that's the curiosity of human nature, they're all going to want to go back today. Right, and I, I can't blame anybody yeah. for that, I certainly would. Um, my home wasn't, didn't happen to be in this fire area, I live in town, I, and great question, thank you. Um, I don't know if I can say anything that would change that. Uh, keep informed and keep an eye on the website. We're gonna to try to get you back into your homes as soon as we possibly can.